What man? You guys didn't do anything. You... On command line, you have to stop. He had a better answer. Check. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Do I expect a louder reply? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Give us a big round of applause for making it here on time. Please come on. Well, my name is Vishwas and I have the honor and pleasure of hosting this event for you. I'll tell you why. We have multiple reasons to celebrate this afternoon. Reason number one is because all of us made it through 2020. So please give us a big round of applause. Come on. It's an achievement in itself. You know, during a pandemic like this, you know, the, in the past one year, we have, uh, the life, our lives have changed in different ways. We have entered a new era of digitalization. What is happening behind me is a, as a, as a live example for that. Right? We were not used to this an, a year ago, but now we are all comfortable. We are okay to work from home. We are okay to work from office. We are also making sure that we take every precaution that is yeah, you know, that is yeah, needed for our family members and our colleagues. So thank you so much for doing that. Once again, please give us a big round of applause. Right? Even though the priorities have changed, one thing that hasn't changed is what Eagle Howl had in mind three years ago when it started. The, the, and with the vision is right there, the passion is right there, and of course, the entire team needs to be congratulated for that. So give yourself a bigger round of applause right now. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. You know, as an anchor, that the audience, one thing audience hate about me is I ask people to clap a lot. It's just that I love, I love listening to applause. I'm addicted to it. So what I'm going to do is, before we begin at all, I want to understand how much of energy we have in this part of the hall right now. Again, ironically, it involves clapping, right? What we're going to do is very simple. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. I want everybody seated out here to clap 10 times. And at the end of the 10th clap, just give me a shout out as to how you feel this afternoon because this is an afternoon that we should be celebrating. And this is an accomplishment that everyone, each and every one of you have lived through, right? Hands up in the air together. Come on, come on. Hands up in the air together. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Uh, you know, we Indians get a little competitive only when we are under pressure. It's just that we relax today, so it's okay, right? All right. Without any further delay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and first a big round of applause for uh, Vinod's parents who made it out here to support him uh, this afternoon. And so it's a very very sweet session. We had battled a lot to him. And of course, a big round of applause to Vinod and Praveen together because you know they've uh, made sure to strong hair, you know, strong held the entire team together, and they've made it three years, and there's then there are 30 years to go ahead. So give them a big round of applause. Come on. <laughs> now, without any further delay, we have someone really, really special who's going to be talking to us. That is our chief guest for this afternoon, Mr. Kumar Venbu. He is the CEO of GoFrugal Technologies. Kumar Dembo is a retail domain expert who initially started as a project associate in IIT Madras, started software product firm Bembu Systems in 1995, and was also the president of COO and Advent Net. So it's a pleasure and honor. I'm sure that we'll get to hear him, hear from him this afternoon. Let's have a big round of applause for him. And please move your attention onto the screen space.
Oh, okay. Very good. So, can you briefly tell me, uh, Vinod, can you briefly tell me uh, who are all there so that I I get an idea because it's very difficult to see from here. Okay, so we have uh, my parents, my entire, our entire team, and uh, from uh, Western Bora, we have some friends from my family as well. And uh, the MC just introduced everyone and then they have all over the video. Okay, so thank you very much, Vinod, and uh, uh, congratulations to you and uh, your family and your entire team for the uh, you know, completing three years uh, as a business, right? I, I uh, you know, I still remember meeting you in our office uh, and the, uh, you know, uh, at least some discouragement that I gave you in uh, the, the business you are in, right? And I think that what is credible, you know, in your achievement and in Eagle Owl's achievement is that, uh, uh, you know, the uh, like, about 12, 13 months back, we, you know, this pandemic was forced on us and uh, how you have actually uh, steered the company, you know, during the, you know, the uh, worst days of lockdown and after that, during the recovery, you know, it, it is a really, uh, you know, a commendable achievement that uh, you have acquired, you know, so many new customers in the last six months. Uh, and you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically you have uh, uh, established the business today, right? Because, uh, like, oh, you know, the worst is behind us. So definitely, you know, we all look forward to a better future now, right? So even though the second wave is upon us, right, I think uh, uh, with the vaccination there and uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, the fear going out of our minds, right? So maybe in a month or uh, maximum two months, we are all going to be back to normal and uh, we will all be doing uh, really well. Right? So I think uh, uh, even to the uh, restaurant owners who are uh, who have got gathered uh, to celebrate this special occasion of Eagle Loan. So one thing uh, we have noticed in the market is that, uh, you know, uh, people who are who have managed to, uh, to you know stay alive and continue their business post covid right uh, you know they are definitely seeing a, a very good growth in same store numbers so you know uh, the mindset we should have is that you know this this too shall pass right we will somehow get over this and we will use this time you know i know restaurants are asked to operate at 50 percent capacity in some places in uh, states like Maharashtra, restaurants are asked to operate uh, and not operate at all or operate only for takeaway and delivery businesses, right? In some places, only for delivery businesses, right? So each day is going to be different for us. And uh, the best thing, you know, until we uh, reach some uh, recovery phase or stability phase is not to have a plan uh, no, and not to have an expectation, but to take uh, one step at a time. So what I did when, uh, you know, on March 15th or March 20th, when we decided to work from home is that uh, I assumed our business is going to have the worst impact. You know, we are going to have our revenues down by 70%. Right. Then, uh, you know, uh, uh, in April, May itself, we realized that uh, things are not as bad as I imagined. So even though our business was down by 50% in April, I was uh, I was not you know depressed or disappointed. I felt uh, you know okay and uh, in fact uh, I was very positive because uh, I already assumed the best, you know worst in my mind. So one thing I learned from the, the experience is that it is best for us to have the worst case plan. Right? You know how much revenue we will have uh, we will not have 
and uh, how much cash burn we will have and uh, what is the longest time it will take to recover if you prepare our mind and if we prepare our finances to that plan anything that happens is a you know good outcome positive outcome because if our mind stays positive during these uncertain times you know our our mind can work magic so that is one uh, thing i i experienced during the pandemic and the second thing is when i say our minds work to magic we were able to think about how we can lower the cost for our customers how we can improve our experience for our customers how we can uh, you know uh, simplify the jobs in our office so that uh, how we can make it easy for our staff right so we were able to do you know and what technology we can use right so that uh, uh, work gets simplified the cost gets reduced and the experience gets enhanced right so these are the problems we worked on you know uh, during the first wave of lockdowns and uh, uh, the post recovery phase till things got back to some sort of normal right and because we were able to engage and collaborate on these problems without worrying too much about uh, what will be the revenue impact right i i probably suffered the uh, the result of that uh, reduced uh, revenue impact and increased the cash burn for a 2 3 day or one week and then you know it no longer affected me it became a very you know uh, it became a happier problem because i was very focused on it. improving so that we come out stronger when the recovery phase begins okay. so we were able to achieve all our goals by making a very fundamental and the structural improvement in our business you know during the lockdown and the, the slow down phase right so that is one thing you know definitely we have very uncertain and the challenging times uh, that is one thing i would really recommend to uh, you know uh, all of you and uh, the next thing i i wanted to talk about is uh, you know uh, uh, like uh, the you know need for technology for businesses in india and how and why you know uh, the restaurant owners and the other friends and family of uh, you know uh, people who have gathered you know who have gathered there you know what should they should uh, Uh, understand and the, you know the, how we can be of support to each other, right? So there, you know, uh, I was looking at uh, uh, companies like uh, Toast Pass, companies like uh, uh, Shopify and uh, Square, you know, uh, and recently Lightspeed, the pass vendor from US or Canada, they acquired a vendor called Vend HQ in New Zealand. So I was looking at their uh, Uh, you know financials and data and things like that right so uh, w- what is stopping you know uh, uh, people like me and the vinod in india to build a light speed or a toast pass or a you know a kind of companies that are uh, uh, leaders in the world right so because uh, you know even though i have been in this business for 15 years and uh, eagle all has been and vinod have been in this business for 3 years we are sort of in a similar boat because uh, our primary market is india so i thought i take a few minutes to uh, you know on vinod's behalf to explain certain things to you i have not spoken to vinod about it but so that you know we get a more supportive ecosystem to build the great companies out of india that can solve the problem india first and take it to the world right because if you see many multinational companies many very successful brands in the technology business they have solved the problem where it is a europe first or a usa first and they have brought it to india right and uh, but it is time you know we solve the problem india first and then take it to the world at a very different price points and at very different customer experience levels so uh, when i looked at the uh, light speed and uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, went hq data light speeds average revenue per store per year is 2250 dollars that means that from every store light speed as a company makes 2250 dollars a year and the vintage queues average revenue per store per year is 1750 dollars right so they they you know that is the kind of per store revenue per year that means that 
if there is a restaurant or a retail store in US, you know, that is a customer of Vintage Q, on an average, they pay, you know, uh, in uh, Indian currency, about 1.8 lakh rupees per year. Right? That is, a, uh, you know, about 1.25 lakhs rupees, you know, for Vent HQ. Because Vent HQ's primary market is Asia Pacific. Right? The light speed's uh, primary market is US, Canada, and Europe. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of per store per year revenue that these companies have. When you look at the Toast Pass, which is addressing uh, the needs of a retailer, you know, sorry, restaurant business in US, you know, Toast Pass makes, uh, you know, uh, including the hardware, $8,000 per restaurant per year. You know, that's the, uh, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, they had some data published about them because they had a huge $350 million base of funds at a multiple billion dollar valuation. If you look at that data, you know, $8,000 plus dollars per year per uh, restaurant, right? That is uh, something like 6 lakh rupees per year per restaurant. So we understand that, you know, uh, the uh, paying capacity of the Indian market is not as high as the U.S. market of the rest of the Asia-Pacific market. But the unfortunate truth is that, you know, uh, entrepreneurs like Vinod and myself, uh, uh, you know, we have to build the products that are comparable to them, you know, to serve you well. And for that, our raw material is people. So for people, for talent, for people, we have to compete with, you know, other companies that serve the export market. Right? So, uh, you know, that is why, you know, when I started the meeting saying, you know, even when we met me a few years back in our Chennai office, you know, I was uh, telling him, you know, uh, don't do the product targeting India as the primary market because uh, you know, finally you need money to fund R&D. You may have a lot of ideas, you may have a lot of capabilities, build a product that is world class, right? But uh, you need the money, right? So entrepreneurs like us who address the Indian market, this is the real challenge, right? So we, you know, uh, we really have to look at you know, uh, meaning, in fact, I can even say this. We, because of this challenge, right, you know, in fact, they say necessity is the mother of invention, right? So our resource constraint is in some sense uh, a challenge that we have to overcome. That means that we, the, the fair way of overcoming that challenge is doing all the work more efficiently than somebody who have these resources do, right? So we definitely focus on doing the work very efficiently. But the areas where we were not, we are not able to scale up is, you know, because money is hard to come by, you know, our investment in marketing and our investment in R&D will eventually suffer, right? So for all the, you know, early customers of Eagle World, one responsibility, you know, we have to take it on ourselves is that, you know, how do we help? Because uh, products in India are available, you know, at, uh, I can say 125th, you know, for a restaurant owner, 125th or 140th or 110th or 120th, the price of what people will pay in the US or Euro. Mm. And uh, definitely if vendors like us uh, fail in our mission to serve you with great products, you know, then the, the products that are proven in the US markets or European market or other richer Asian, Asia Pacific neighbors will come here. Where the per store per uh, year, you know, price will be five times or eight times more in India also, right? So we definitely, you know, in that sense, we are on a mission, right? We want to uh, make sure we, you know, with your help and with your active collaboration, we build a great business where we can solve this problem India first and take it to the rest of the world. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, and when I met Vinod and uh, when I spoke to him recently, and I perfectly understand that that's the mission we know that the Eagle Lola are on, you know, they are on. And uh, definitely this mission requires a lot of your assistance and a lot of your help, a lot of collaborations of you. But, uh, you know, but, but if you all come forward and uh, collaborate more actively with entrepreneurs like us, definitely, you know, we won't disappoint you. We will end up building world-class organizations out of India. That will mean, you know, that value created. You know, what is, you may ask, what is in it for us? 
you know that value create that results in more and more higher paying jobs in india where the you know the gdp growth of our country accelerates the income levels of people raise and as the income levels of people raise they come more to your restaurant and they spend more right so we are all in such a interdependent economy right if we do all the value creation outside of this country then definitely you know we are not uh, going to benefit from that right our uh, our market for even uh, you know fine dining and the higher end restaurants and good food will also be limited right? so we can all help each other in doing this so that we generate lot of long term wealth and we we create wealth class solution out of here for the global market and eventually we all end up doing better and we all end up doing well so uh, with that i would uh, like to thank vinod for inviting me for the uh, this uh, third anniversary celebration and i wish uh, you know the eagle uh, all and uh, all its customers and family members great success please uh, stay safe and uh, stay healthy and uh, stay sp- stay strong thank you very much you know thank you thank you thank you sir thank you so much uh, i think uh, based on what mr kumar vembu said one thing that was uh, very evident is that in the year of 2020 we were pressured into something that we never experienced before something that was so simple that we take it uh, we took it for granted was freedom right we we got experience how it was to be trapped at one place and not being able to do what we wanted to but then the only thing that uh, that helped us uh, get through was optimism persistence and the third most important thing is appreciation right appreciating your colleagues appreciating making sure that everybody is working towards what the initiative was so to do that i want everybody to raise your right hand give someone raise your right hand give us as a pat on the back and say good job so on to that to that it's very important because you guys have done a very very good job and of course thanks to mr vembu here uh, he took out time to make sure that he spoke to us thank you sir thank you so much for that thank you so much thank you very much all the best and uh, you know thank you thank you so much so without uh, without any further delay i'd like to move forward here so i'm going to be talk i'm going to be calling on uh, mr vinod of course who's going to be coming on stage and talking about something very special about eagle out the journey of how eagle out has been but what is more important is you've been seeing vinod for a long time now i'm sure you know more than him uh, know more about him than me but then something that he told me is that he loves numbers you know i'd like you to please join me up uh, now stage here because you like numbers and you're also interested in poker and a lot of other things which is designed with numbers so what we will do is we will do a small game between you and me okay it's a simple number game okay you will speak tamil at home correct correct now we know english numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 tamil numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what we going to do is very simple a simple competition between you and i'd like you to select an opponent for yourself here. it can be anybody anyone if you think you can you can have a leverage over somebody that is also up to you so yeah, that's why i'm letting you to choose an opponent for yourself it can be anybody it can be a partner as well partner in business also it can be anybody let's call vargis mr vargis so trust me this is a, this, this is a very very simple activity if you could please join us here for just like uh, 10 seconds please come on come on let's have a big round of applause for him there right now now we are talking about numbers it's a very very simple activity the timing that we have is 30 seconds we're going to start uh, with you okay. what we're going to do is very simple you just have to give you the very start your time you just have to shout out numbers for example 1 2 3 4 <laughs> in english and tamil 1 2 3 4 now but when you say it you have to say it in alternative languages for example 1 2 3 4 <laughs> so in 30 seconds i'd like to see who does better <laughs> yes it can be any language it can be english and any other language that you prefer but it has to be alternative all right let's give it a, let's give it a go let's give a big round of applause this for our okay i get started yes 1 1 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2
I didn't really happen. Go and ask anyone what to build. We knew exactly what needed to be built and how it was built. So when we started talking to people, maybe you know, on our computers and friends in the network, almost everyone said these things. Oh, Indian restaurants won't pay you. SaaS will never work in India. You cannot sell a pure inventory management solution in India, right? These were very commonly told, and they said without building for putting over, nothing will happen. I said fine. Even three years back, when I was running through this idea, I had a friend from uh, Singapore. I spoke to a VC who was uh, used to work with Matrix Partners, who in fact was part of the investment team in one of our competitors seven eight years ago. And he said the same thing. You know, the, are you mad? You are selling to restaurants and that you are doing SaaS in India. Never mind, it's not not going to work. But I think whenever I hear the sentence that SaaS won't work in India, it starts making me think. Why are why are these people saying that? And I remember I, I went to YouTube and typed why SaaS doesn't work in India. I saw Clearbit CEO talking about the same. Many other CEOs, even Mr. Kumar, said the same that he is trying to get tough, right? So I, I saw the same repeat parrot from most people that SaaS doesn't work in India <clears throat> and that you don't sell to restaurants, right? And I think my nature is such a way that if somebody says don't do it, I end up doing it. That's that's how I'm probably designed. And I think my Parents know it all too well, and my family also knows it very well. That just because something hasn't been done before, it doesn't mean it can't be done. That's that's the way you have to approach things, right? The way the other way to put it is absence of proof doesn't mean proof of absence. There is always somebody who's going to start doing it and prove the world wrong, right? And it could be you, if not you. There's definitely going to be somebody else at some point of time. So this is the conviction with which. I decided that in spite of the world conspiring against me, telling you don't do it. Yes, there were a couple of people who said do it. For anyone who wants to do a business, it can be a restaurant or a services business or whatever you do. If you strongly believe in it, you have to go for it, right? You don't have to worry about how much money you are going to make, but if you think you are genuinely solving a problem, you have to build it. So that is how <coughs> this uh, the world will remember you at some point of time, right? And they'll say, ah, yeah, it was a good idea after it becomes a and a lot of people ask, like, why the brand is called Eagle Owl, right? Again, this was uh, decided in 2016. I remember we were at a, some other office in HR layout. And two reasons. One is uh, I'm a huge wildlife admirer. I, I love animals and birds. Uh, that's one thing. And secondly, the bird, the bird's name has a huge significance to what we are exactly trying to do. Uh, the eyes of an uh, eagle and the wisdom of an owl and eagle owl itself is a wonderful bird with uh, terrific night vision and uh, it's, it's top of the food chain as well and I think it, it kind of looks at the, both the macro details of a restaurant and goes into the minute of uh, restaurant operations in terms of uh, your uh, profitability and I think the name fits in very well for the type of work that we do. What do you guys think? Right? Yeah? Okay, I'm trying to mimic uh, Vishwas, but not as good as me. <laughs> okay. So, simple, right? Naming a company is fine, getting an idea is fine, then what do you do after that, right? And you have to put a team together and make the team believe in the idea, right? Ultimately, who's going to build it? I mean, you know what to do, but you need a team of uh, marketeers, engineers, and more than that, a team that believes in your idea matters more than anything, right? How do you, so you're, you're always selling your vision to people at any point of time. And uh, this is an interesting slide that I, I think all most tech companies uh, would like to understand you or more from a marketing perspective, right? Now, <coughs> no matter which technology that you build, uh, particularly in high-tech products, it was designed by uh, Jeffrey Moore who wrote a book called Crossing the Chasm, which is a good marketing puzzle. Apparently, I came across this only two months back not that I knew this before, right? So, in this book, he says, your target market is only 1.5% of the entire market, which means you are looking for innovators and early adopters in any segment that you work in. So, if I rewind back and see what we did three years back, we also did the same thing intuitively, not by, not just that, you know, it, was, it happened by, it just happened by accident, I think. I mean, we just felt that we have to go behind great brands, right? And when I say brand, I have a very different perspective. People say, oh, it's a great brand. But no, the brand is brand is built by the person behind the brand, right? If you take windmills, it's Ajay and Kamal, right? If you take Arbor, it's Sikha and somebody. 
is our definition of Elon Musk brother, right? So a brand or a company is built by the person behind the founding team, and the entire team rallies behind that brand, right? So when you <coughs> build any product for the for any mar- any mass market that you are targeting, it is good to go behind your uh, innovators and early adopters because the other guys will never buy you. It's going to take time. They will follow what the leaders in the segment are doing, right? <coughs> yeah. So this is a funny story, right? So <coughs> four five years back, I met uh, the founder of uh, Redbus. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows Pani Sama Redbus. He was uh, one year junior to me in uh, Bits Pillar, and I met him for for my previous startups fundraise uh, capabilities. So at that time, he told me, you know, every startup will die three four times. If you cross that, you will be fine. You will you know move on in like three years four years. Those are good times. And I think at that time I didn't understand why is he saying about death of a startup all the time. And I realized that's what happens when you run a company, right? In 2019, uh, I had no money. Uh, we didn't know who was going to work with me. I had no idea. The product was running. Uh, I remember coming to uh, meet Ajay in April or May. I told him I'm shutting it down. He said, "There was silence for a minute." No, you can't shut it down, <laughs> right? I still remember that day, and uh, then we did a lot. We spoke to a lot of people. We tried, and then fortunately for us, we kept working hard at it. We didn't uh, lose hope. A lot of people helped me. Uh, Praveen, of course, was talking to me every day, and then we had Amol, Manish, uh, CEO of Printo, people like Ashok, uh, who's sitting here, who's one of the investors in the early stages, who who's a believer, right? He's an innovator and a believer, right? So these people stepped in and said, "Fine, we won't let you die. We'll let you run the company, right?" That's how this happened. Pretty much on the ventilator, but things move on, right? And yeah, <laughs> then we said, okay, the date is wrong. It's 2020. Last year, as things were improving, right? We were gearing up to 70, 80 outlets uh, by Feb last year, and then COVID happened, and again, boom, six months of zero revenues, loss of customers, loss of outlets. It was a very tough period, and uh, we weren't sure when things are actually going to recover. So, <clears throat> can I have some water? Yeah. <clears throat> so, you're wondering, COVID then the choice was this: okay, just resign uh, to your to the fate and sit and do nothing, or keep trying, right? And uh, <clears throat> that's what we did. We we kept trying. We didn't lose hope. And then, uh, if, if we actually see in the last uh, six months since June, July, we end up signing more than uh, 55 new stores, right? And this has actually happened. People like Portful with 17 outlets, Bakenas with 13 outlets, Hammer Group with uh, seven outlets, Vapor, uh, Amintri, pretty much all uh, the premium brands and innovators in the market. They all signed up in the last six months. <clears throat> so it was not as bad as it did impact us quite a lot in terms of revenue. Our expenses kept going up, but we didn't lose hope. We have to keep trying. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So when I say God for us, it's basically the patrons who are supporting us, like windmills, our early adopters, customers, and of course our investors who are backing us, and friends and family and well wishers. Right? So yeah, we're very happy with that. One aspect that I've uh, always uh, tell people or anyone who's running any kind of a business is. is something that you should remember the day you sign up a client is the day you start losing it right it's a very powerful sentence which don draper uses in mad men uh, is a great marketing person apparently now this uh, topic is very close to my heart right uh, i believe a company will be will become great only if your customer success department is great otherwise there is absolutely uh, no chance you can actually have an inferior product and sell it to a lot of people if you are uh, Support department is great, and you you would have realized that in real life, uh, I don't know if people use maybe uh, Visa card versus Master card, but you try and call up an Amex customer care, you will see the difference, and that's why you are paying that five thousand, ten thousand extra per year. So it's not it doesn't come free. So <coughs> yeah, thanks. So so here we right from the beginning we set that culture in the team that no emails, phone calls, SMS or WhatsApp from customers will never. Go unrequited. It will be responded to within five minutes maximum, right? And we do that, and that's one of the reasons we 
we generally care for you and uh, this is something that comes naturally because I've seen a lot of companies or products that I use even today. If you raise a query or a ticket, you will get an automated message saying somebody will get back to your work for us. Right? And that probably never happens and then you, you cannot sometimes explain your problems over email or chat but you want to have a phone and they'll say no we don't have phone support. It has to be only on uh, maybe a chat. Right? It, it doesn't work like that. right? If you you are ultimately you have to understand that a product is nothing but you are trying to solve somebody's problem and product is just a via media or a tool that helps you solve it. It can be done in an Excel sheet or if you do it manually or a product like Eagle Old does it for you. Right? Ultimately you have to understand why you have built it. If that approach is clear, then you will never force your customer you do things that makes his life easy. Alright, I think where are we right now? Yeah, I think this topic, I think just uh, Mr. Vembo also touched upon uh, narrowly. We were actually thinking, why is it that we don't have great tech products built out of India? Why is it that all the products that we use more often on a daily basis, which are all on the right side, is built by companies in the USA? Why is that? Anyone? Yeah, even I don't know why, but it just seems to happen. Right? If you look at uh, the only exceptions to this to a certain extent are uh, companies like Zoho and Freshworks, but even they sell primarily to the US market. right? They don't sell their SaaS products much in India due to a lot of reasons which again Mr. Webb also does. I think there has to be a collaborative effort between the vendor and the by the way, so if you don't have it, there is the companies that are providing the solution won't be incentivized to innovate or invest more in their R&D, which is one of the reasons none of the top companies that he mentioned, right? I, we didn't discuss this, of course, so don't think that we collaborate on this. These are the companies which do very well in USA, and each of them are at least you know three billion, four billion, two hundred million valuation kind of companies. They all sell only in US, Canada and pretty much in Europe. None of these companies will ever even want to come to India because they know that contracts here are not probably honored. People don't pay on time and people don't pay. And there's a huge difference in terms of what they will charge and what restaurants they are paying in India. So this is the kind of market that we are looking at. But if you look at why we want to be different, we really want to build a product which is world class for the Indian segment, right? which is why we started this company and I think it is possible and uh, I think Eagle Oil can beat most of the guys behind here and I'm not being very uh, not uh, thumping more than chest around it but we are very very confident that we, are, we can beat most of these guys and I'll tell you why right? uh, recently we signed up a client in uh, Kenya uh, in a place called Mombasa this restaurant is called the Blue Room he is running his restaurant since 1953. Uh, even I was a little shocked. 1953, like you know, almost you know, close to the independence era of our uh, country. And uh, he told me, uh, you know, I've checked all the products in the market, including the ones that I've shown here. And he said, Eagle Owl is definitely comparable and better than the most that I've seen so far. And this is exactly his words. Uh, so it, it's not impossible to create a, a world class product out of India. It is just that the mindset of the entrepreneurs and also the your your clients should also change in making sure that the ecosystem survives in a way where people are supportive of each other and they together try and win the market, right? Which is when you will get get products out of a country. <coughs> okay, I'm going to stop right here and uh, let Praveen take over at, uh, at a later time. Uh, my final word before I leave the stage is. Again, I want to thank each and every customer that I worked with, people who are still with me, people who have left for various reasons. And uh, one special mention about why are we holding this event here is because this place is very special to me. Right? Pretty much Eagle Oil was born right out of this place. In 2018, uh, end of 17, 18 is when I met Ajay, showed the product and it was a very crappy product at the time. But he still believed in it and uh, he decided to go ahead. And I still remember the day when uh, I gave a demo to him and uh, Chef Manjit 
and uh, I was so happy and uh, I said Ajay can you pay me something he said uh, go take whatever you want from the finance right I just took a small 2000 check I have it framed in uh, in my office it's still framed right because it is not I know that it is not easy right uh, particularly building a tech company in, in our country and selling it to people is, is uh, extremely difficult so Ajay and the entire Windmills, Windmills family a big thanks to all of you for uh, hosting us here and giving us the confidence that yes, we are on to something because without your help I don't think I would be here at this point of time. So thanks, thanks a lot everyone. Bye. I mean I'd like to start by saying congratulations to the entire team. Like they say no company is built overnight, no company especially in the year of 2021 can be built in a conventional manner. So you need to break the stereotype to be able to make sure that you get into the market and make sure the people know that you're there to stay. So in the like you know said in the past six months you guys have got 30 plus clients that is something that we should be celebrating right now. So raise your hand and give a high five to your neighbor and say congratulations. Come on, give a high five to your neighbor and say congratulations because you've done it. Yeah, amazing, amazing because you know 30 is a number which can go up and up and up. That is the only way to look forward to. Now. Uh, everybody knows that Eagle Owl is what it is because of its clients and the people who work for Eagle Owl. And like uh, Vinod was mentioning, Windmills happens to be a very integral part of that. So I think today we have something, today it's a special moment for all of us at Eagle Owl and we'd like to take this opportunity to share it with all of our clients there. To start with, let's please invite on stage Mr. Ajay from uh, Windmills to please join us on stage. Let's have a big round of applause for him there. Also remember to motivate somebody to come on stage, your applause need to be louder. Yeah? There you go. And of course, and of course, with that I'd also request Vinod and Praveen to please join me on stage here. Because uh, this is a moment that we all will cherish for years to come. Mr. Ajay, I have to say, I've been here multiple times. I love this place, so congratulations on that. And we know you know why I'm congratulating you, right? But something something that we have very something very special that we have for you is I'm going to give you a lot of knowledge about this, but we know holds a lot more knowledge about this because he's been very he's been really he's been very keen. You know, I've been speaking to Vinod since yesterday. Vinod has a keen sense of uh, you know detail. So I'd like you to please tell people what this is actually is. Don't put me on a spot, man. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, so it's a double saint called Thiruvallar. Uh, hold it, I can't hold it one man. So I, I, I hold him in high regards. Uh, I don't think a lot of uh, uh, people know, know, don't know this great person. Uh, you can equate to know Kabir of North India, for example, if you want. Right? That's good enough. Yeah. Okay. So now, if you could please do the honor of uh, giving it to Ajay, placing it to Ajay. Ajay, thank you so much for being a part of this journey. And of course, before I let you go, before I let you go, I'd love, I'd love for you to tell everybody as to how your experience is. So, uh, I don't quite remember when Vinod came in first and we started this. Uh, but he's been, uh, when you work with individuals like Vinod, uh, you always you know that he's watching your back. Uh, he will never let you down. And whatever the problems are that you face in your business, he's, he's part of our team. That's how I look at Eagle Owl, that it's not a separate company, but he's part of our team and uh, we bother him all the time with all kinds of issues. Uh, so that's the kind of relationship we want to have with our clients, uh, with, our, with our vendors. And uh, if everybody can have that same relationship with Eagle Owl, then it just builds the family bigger and bigger. And that's how we should operate. Um, so we wish we know all the best. and. Uh, I know one day is going to be much bigger than the restaurant business. And so hopefully that time he'll remember us. Okay? Thank you. I'm sure these wishes mean a lot to everybody sitting here. And I'm sure this collaboration goes forward for millennials. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for that. Up next, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Prasanna from Brew and Barbecues, please. Let's have a big round of applause for Mr. Prasanna. Is he here? He's right here, guys. As I said, louder the round of applause, the faster you get. There you go. And of course, remember, every time you clap, you're celebrating this moment for yourself and the place that you work at. Mr. Prasanna, please. And of course, I'd like to call Vinod and Praveen again. And to please facilitate, it, uh, facilitate him with this wonderful, wonderful idol that we have here. Lali Bajau.
Prasanna, first of all, thank you so much for being here. And I'd love for you to say your experience, Hannah, how your experience has been with Ikalas, how has it been with Vinod, and of course, the Let's go. Vinod, I treat him more than like a, like a friend or family, I can say. He's been my support from the day when I want to learn the industry and want to understand the basics, so he's been guiding me from there. And I think he's still uh, undervaluating himself. So that's a great, I mean, he's a great friend of mine and he's a good support. Congratulations. You know, everyone who believes that Vinod is undervaluating himself, that's his trick. That is how he got here. That's not his trick. So what I mean to say is, so he has a long way to go, but he's going very slow. That's what I meant. Absolutely. In fact, you know, we all make sure, we all make sure that we are a part of this journey throughout. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to request uh, Mr. Santosh from uh, Bombay Presbytery, please. Do we have Santosh here? You know what he's waiting for? Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Santosh, for being here with us this afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you here. This is for you. Brothers, before I let you go, I know as an MC, it's my it's my utmost pleasure to make sure that we make everybody on stage speak their mind out. First of all, thank you so much for being here. I'm sure you, I'm sure you'll play, find a very very beautiful spot for this to place at. Uh, if you could, if you could say a few words, please. Yeah, it's like we have signed up with the club like maybe two or three months. Yeah, uh, since then we know that been a Great support. He's been teaching me a lot over the software to just understand what it is and meddle with it along. We just on it to learn more and then experiment it and use it quite enough effectively. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because all I can say is welcome to the family. I'm sure you're here to stay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, up next, I request Nikhil Gupta from Pizza Bakery to please join us on stage, please. Mr. Nikhil, I have a big round of applause for Mr. Nikhil here because he's taking the time uh, to join us here this afternoon. Thank you so much, Nikhil. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. First of all, this is for you. All right, so Nikhil, you know, you know the drill. I'm not going to let you go just for that. Uh, before that, before that at all, I'd like to ask you: You from Bangalore? From Bangalore. Okay. What is the one thing that you love about Bangalore? The weather. So, I mean, everybody knows that it was, you know, it was raining yesterday and today. Thaw, you know, that it's sunny outside. So, what do you have to say about Eagle? Um, you know, one of the things uh, that you know said, and I think it's very true, is uh, support Eagle has been fantastic. I mean, uh, every product has its challenges and its growth cycle, but uh, the team at Eagle Isle have been fantastic and have supported us throughout over the last few months where we've gone, gotten quite active on the platform and a uh, lot of requests and customization, etc. They've been very supportive on it and very responsive more than anything. So, good job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please take your feet. And for everybody everybody who walked on stage uh, to make sure that you made your presence feel here, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Let's go. Once again, let's have a collective round of applause for all of them, please. Let's have a round of applause for all of them who made it on stage. Up next, I'm going to be calling on someone who's made a long journey to be here to celebrate this moment here with all of you out here. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about... Who am I talking about? Praveen. Praveen, of course. I'm going to be calling on Praveen. Uh, you heard Vinod talk about the journey of Eagle how it has been, how it started and how it's going. So now Praveen is the, is the, is the one who's going to be talking to you about the roadmap of what Eagle Owl has, you know? anticipated for itself. As all of us know, uh, Praveen has a two decades of rich experience working with MNCs such as IFF, AIG and uh, IBM. Previously founded two successful startups. He's an active angel investor in early stage companies acting as a mentor. And I have to say this, he's got his PhD in computer science uh, and also an executive MBA from Wharton. That's a big round of applause for him. Right? He deserves a bigger round of applause because he's made a long journey to be here this afternoon to make sure he motivates you to make sure that Eagle, ha Eagle Owl has a very good future up ahead. 
Thank you guys. Thank you. So, uh, happy to be here. And uh, we know, as you all know, as I uh, started Eagle Owl and I joined him a couple of years uh, before that. And uh, so before now, when I joined in say 2019. So one thing I like about Vinod is like he's super passionate about what he's doing. And uh, so if you all know, and he brought most of the clients here as well, he strongly believes in what he's building. And so I'm here helping him out so that we can go from where we are today, so that we can go to the fifth year and tenth year anniversaries as well. So just to give a recap of what we are doing and where we are today. So, as uh, Mr. Vengo and Vinod said, like we validated the product market fit. We have most of our clients here in India, and uh, we are in 10 cities, and uh, we have a client in Kenya, we have a client in New York, but we are still very early, and there's a lot of ways to go, and a lot of clients are quite at work. But at the same time, we got to take a moment and celebrate where we are and what we have achieved. And it's uh, extremely tough for a startup like us to do this and have clients who love us and for strong advocates. So, applause for all our clients and where we are. <clears throat> this is something we are super proud of. So, I don't know how many of you know about uh, the site called G2. It's a, a site where most restaurant owners go to when they are looking for buying software. And globally, we are ranked number three Compared to all the companies that we pointed out there, like Toast and Clover and Absurd, we are number three. And you can see the most important thing is quality of support and our ease of use. So that's something we are so proud of. And we are going to continue the culture of keeping the customers in the forefront and making sure that they are happy. Because if they don't have value out of the product, we can be in business. So that's uh, G2 Reviews. So, where do we go from here? So, we started out building our inventory product, and we also have uh, billing software and table reservations. But that's not all, right? So, we do have a lot of plans and roadmap, and we are going to go start working on all these things. And we have talked to some of our clients about these things, but just to give a flavor, marketplace for restaurant supplies. So, we have about uh, 28K SKUs. 2700 suppliers in our platform right now. So how to make use of that is to build a marketplace so that you can actually buy and do your purchases with the suppliers and transact in our platform directly. So that's in the roadmap. And uh, we're also working our, uh, on our 2.0 inventory management system. That's Eagle Oil 2.0 that's coming up. <coughs> and then uh, OCR. So making purchases and doing purchase entries is something you've been doing manually. So some of the feedback we got from clients both here in India and US is to have a means to automate the purchase entry through an OCR software. So that's in roadmap as well. And then benchmarking. So this is something <coughs> with the data we have in the platform, it's very easy for us to give. So we have uh, cloud kitchens, all the briony houses like Mignos and Potful and uh, Money, yes. So, and then we can provide industry insights in terms of what is the most selling item, uh, chicken biryani, or uh, if you look at breweries, which beer is selling that? Is it a wheat beer or a New, New England IPA or lager, whatever the case may be? <coughs> so, providing benchmarking and industry insights is another one. And then open APIs. So we believe in opening our platform so that anyone could consume our APIs and our uh, modules. So the clients can pick and choose what vendors they want to work with. So they can use uh, <coughs> different vendors for POS and uh, they can use for inventory. Yes, and uh, finally the integrations. So this is more important when we go outside India, where we have to integrate with other vendors so that we can consume their sales data automatically. So that's another thing that we have in the roadmap as well. So a lot of exciting things to come. And uh, hopefully in another two years, when we do the 5th year anniversary or the 10 year anniversary, it's going to be much better. <coughs> so one step at a time, right? 
So we have those three modules, uh, which is the inventory viewers and table reservations. And uh, so we have a few other things in the roadmap as well. So again, thank you everyone for being here. It's a moment to celebrate uh, what we have achieved so far. And uh, enjoy the beers, enjoy the food, and uh, this is more. Well. Thank you so much. Before, before we move ahead uh, and hit chairs, of course, which most of you have already done, I'd like to invite the entire team of Eagle Out here on stage, please, so that uh, the entire team is known to everybody who's here. Also, I request, before we do that, can you ask Mr. Ashok to please join us on the stage? Let's have a big round of applause for him there. Ashok, thank you so much for being with us uh, here this afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you here. You know, uh, you've been an integral part of the success of uh, Eagle Owl. Anything that you want to say to the people out here? Uh, <clears throat> good evening, gentlemen. Um, I'm a shy talker on stage, but uh, the way people have spoken before me, I think I, I can speak more than that, and more than them. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Windmill is one of the finest places uh, in country uh, to come wine and dine. And uh, I like the place so much the food and the, the beer are the best. But one day it uh, you know, tasted a little bitter. And that day I realized that the owl is here. <laughs> uh, and you know, I think all of you would have uh, studied this in probably fifth or sixth standard English. There's a saying that uh, behind every beautiful owl, there's a roaring tiger. Have you read about this saying? No, you haven't studied well. So, uh, well, uh, the, the the tiger behind the eagle owl is uh, Vinod. Uh, Vinod is a tiger, oh, for sure. Uh, you know, when he came to me, well, you know, I think uh, we, on on various walks in Shantiniketan, uh, he he has been always telling me about that he wants to do something like this, and I always, uh, yeah, I mean, Vinod talks a lot. So, I mean, he, he talks so many things. So, uh, when, when my partner asked, are you sure that you want to uh, invest in Eagle Owl? Uh, uh, I said, yeah, I mean, it is, it is definitely a very interesting place to invest. And then they say, they asked me, have you seen the software? Uh, I told them that I have seen Vinod Rajaram. And uh, Vinod is a guy, uh, I have seen him. He's, he's such a high energy guy and a live wire, right? When he was... Uh, you know, really in doldrums in, 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 in the real bad state, he used to come and uh, talk about everything which is going wrong. And I was not sure whether he is actually crying or celebrating. So that's the kind of energy he carries with him all the time. So, uh, when when he's in, you know, lowest of abyss, I know he will, he will uh, limp but walk. Uh, when situations have uh, hit him hard, he smiled uh, broad, and when situation have hit him harder, he smiled even broader. So, so you know, I, I even today I don't know what Eagle Lounge is, how the software looks like, <laughs> what kind of feature it has. I know it has some good features, and that's why so many people are using it. But I know we know, and as an entrepreneur, I know that if you have the if you have the right team, uh, you have you have done your job right. So. And uh, as they say, I think this saying you must have heard that behind every successful tiger, there is a tigress. And uh, <laughs> so Radhika, congratulations and best uh, wishes. And uh, Praveen, I think, uh, is, is a great addition to team. So, you know, uh, you know congratulations, Praveen, you have made a right choice. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much. So one thing I like to disagree is that, you know, you're not a shy talker. In fact, in fact, a couple more of these, you can become a stand-up comedian. Please make sure to remember that. And also, like, you know, one thing that uh, Ashok spoke, it's very, it is very evident that he is an investor. Because an investor never invests in a business. He invests in people. So, you are the people he's invested in. So, let's have a big round of applause for one thing. And thank you so much for that. And now that we've been talking about Eagle Owl from the very beginning, I'm sure people out there are wondering who the team of Eagle Owl is. So, if you could request the entire team of Eagle Owl to please uh, join us on the stage. And I request Vinod and Praveen to do the honor of introducing the team to the rest of the people. Come on guys, come on. This is time for you to shine. This is time for you to shine. 
whenever you get an opportunity to be on stage, always take it. So a little bit of this week uh, is Navet. Navet takes care of uh, front and back end and everything else. There's no distinction in terms of what executes. Ankit takes care of the entire back end. Uh, over the last three years, he's been a fulcrum around which the company has been running on the engineering department. Also. So big thanks to him for that. Nitin has been with us for, actually all of them have been with us for three years ever since we started. And uh, I think like many other people, they are great believers in the product. So Nitin takes care of the back end as well. And, also, the point of sale that an open pipe integration is other parts. Uh, Ira takes care of customer success. She is a uh, chef by degree, right? Uh, qualified chef, and she passed out of uh, Oberai School of Learning and Development. Madhuri joined us as a front end uh, engineer uh, six months ago. She takes care of the UI and how good, how good it is. All that she takes care of. Radhika does everything in the company but for engineering, right? So right from uh, Posting jobs, recruiting people, or uh, I mean, figuring out you know finance and everything investments. So she pretty much runs the company, I would say, in my absence. Of course, then there's uh, Pravin. Uh, yeah. right. uh, of course, we have three other people who are not here. Are they yeah. mm -hmm. no. So Harsh, who runs uh, our sales team, uh, Anushree, who hits the design, and uh, Varun, who is also working with the ERA with customer support. You know, they, they say um, a team is only as good as its leader. I'm sure once again, I saw a big round of applause for uh, Vinod and Praveen and also Radhika for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this celebration here. You know, this is just a three year celebration, as Praveen uh, multiple times mentioned, five years and ten years are not very far by. So everybody who's here right now, thank you so much. Each and every uh, restaurant or other client who's a part of Eagle, Eagle House, thank you so much for being here. And uh, there's only better future ahead. Thank you so much again. And guys, uh, people on the stage, this is the 30th anniversary. Maybe a little more excitement would do. Yeah. It's okay. I know there are various people here. You've gotten used to being silent during the lockdown and all that, but there's no restriction on shouting. You know what? I'm going to give you a countdown of 3, 2, and 1. I'd like you to make some noise for everybody who's sitting out there. Come on, three, two, one. Yay! Thank you so much. Now that uh, now that we've done that, everybody, I'd like to request everybody to please raise your glass, hit cheers, and it's time for us to celebrate. Thank you so much for being here once again. My name is Vishwas. Thank you. Thank you.